Hello and welcome to the Monday, June 14th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida, but teaching virtually in Paris, France. Whenever a vendor releases a security bulletin and uh, patches that usually go with it, there is usually a list of uh, vulnerable devices or uh, vulnerable software versions that are affected and that need to be updated. The problem is that uh, software or device versions that are no longer supported are often not listed. So it's not really clear if those devices are vulnerable. And apparently this happened with SonicWall VPN devices, in particular, the Secure Remote Access 4600 devices. As CrowdStrike found out, uh, these devices are vulnerable uh, to a problem that was patched in early 2019, even though that vulnerability was not necessarily called out for uh, these older devices. There's also then some later updated guidance that apparently isn't quite correct. Version 8 and 9 of the software that's running on these devices is vulnerable. However, there was a version 9005 that, according uh, to some Sonic Wall advice, was not vulnerable, but CrowdStrike found that it was indeed vulnerable, and that was the latest and um, only real current firmware that's running on these SRA 4600 devices. So, your only really mitigation here is throw out the old devices, buy yourself a new one that's running the 10 dot firmware, and that should then fix this problem. And this is really not just a sonic wall uh, problem. This is very common that these end of life devices are no longer supported and the uh, vulnerabilities are no longer really made public uh, in these devices because, well, uh, nobody really is testing them other than maybe the bad guys. So always keep track of uh, out of date and end of life devices and software in your network and replace it as soon as possible. And well, just to show that uh, SonicWall isn't alone here, uh, these parameter devices are always actively being attacked. Fortinet here, another example, Guy took a look at his honeypot uh, to just uh, see what kind of attacks he can spot in his logs. And sure enough, uh, there is a fairly active uh, campaign or actually multiple campaigns likely that are looking for unpatched 40 gate SL VPNs. This is one of those cases where if you do find a vulnerable device in your network, uh, do assume it has already been compromised. And one problem in many smart devices is the presence of microphones in many of these devices. For example, a few years ago, Google got into trouble for their class break sensor that's a part of the Google Nest ecosystem, recording people's conversations and sending them back to Google. Of course, this device needs a microphone in order to detect the class breaking, but shouldn't, and that was really a bug according to Google record anything else but uh, these uh, class break events. So the problem is uh, what other sensor could be used in order uh, to do recognize audible events, but not be sensitive to spoken words. And researchers at the University of Michigan and Carnegie Mellon University came up with a neat little trick. And that's, well, basically just the use of a microphone that's only sensitive to ultrasonic frequencies. That way, uh, speech is not being picked up by these microphones. And apparently, they still get enough of the other events in order to still provide useful presence detection or things like, for example, class break sensors. Now, as it's tricky to come up with a microphone that really just picks up uh, ultrasonic frequencies, what they actually did here was that they used the microphone and then uh, some additional electronics to filter out anything below a certain frequency. 
And for the Linux users out there, there is an important vulnerability in Polkit that you probably do want to patch. If you're not familiar with Polkit, it's system D's answer for sudo. Just like a sudo polkit can be used in order to allow users uh, to execute specific commands with higher privileges and polkit may also prompt for a passwords in certain circumstances depending on its configuration. Simplistically speaking, the problem with Polkit was that you can send a message uh, to Polkit and while it is evaluating whether or not you have the required access or not, if you kill the process that send the message during that time window, and that's a uh, about 10 or so milliseconds, Polkit will automatically allow the action to pass. Essentially, it sort of considers the request canceled. So it says, hey, it doesn't really matter anyway, and it will give you permission. And this can very easily, with a little bit of bash scripting, be exploited to get root access to any Linux system with Polkit installed. Expect it to be installed on all systems that are running systemd, which are pretty Pretty much all of the major current uh, Linux distributions. Well, and that's it for today. This week, uh, the podcast may be a little bit off as far as uh, the publication time goes, just due to the different time zone I'm working in. But uh, well, uh, we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.